Hi folks, and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. So today we're going to be taking a look at another Psyker build, and this one's just, just fun, to be honest. I've been enjoying this. I'm not going to slap the meta label on it, because it probably isn't, but, you know, it's enjoyable. Let's jump in, shall we? So, as you can see, we're using the Dueling Sword still. Uh, mobility is our dump stat. Everything else is at 80. Damage, finesse, cleave damage, and penetration. Lol. As for the perks, we're going for Maniac and Catapus because it's funny to two-shot um, crushers on Damnation Auric. And also, Maniacs are a bit scary, so this is going to help us dispatch them quite quickly. As for the Blessings, we're sticking with Repost and Precognition. This is going to work very well with the talents. It's going to reward us for dodging and basically avoid taking damage. But I'll explain that more when we get into the talents. Next up, the weapon we're using is the Recon Lasgun. You can switch this out for uh, the Infantry Autogun, but I just prefer the Recon Lasgun. Slightly less damage, higher fire rate, more ammo, and less annoying reload times. So with this, we're going for Unyielding and Flak. Unyielding because this is going to be where most of our boss damage comes from, and Flak because it's the most prevalent armor type in the game. As for Blessings, we're going with Infernus and Dum Dum. Infernus gives us plus four burn stacks and critical hit to a maximum of 12 stacks. This is just going to help with damage. And Dum Dum gives us plus six percent close range damage on repeated hit stacks five times. So this is just going to be a big power boost for us. Now, if you want to go with the infantry auto gun, I would highly suggest going with uh, Dum Dum and Fire Frenzy, actually. So don't go for Death Bitter. Dum Dum and Fire Frenzy. And you probably want to use the same perks as Unyielding and Flak. I just haven't built this one properly because I don't use it very often at all. So if you want to go for the Infantry Auto Gun, Dum Dum and Fire Frenzy with the same perks as the Recon. Now, for the Curios, we are going to be using two Toughness Curios with the same perks, which are plus 5% Toughness, 4% Combat Ability Regeneration, and 20% Damage Resistance Gunners. And a singular Max Stamina Curio with 5% toughness, 4% combat ability generation, and 20% damage resistance to gunners. Now, this is going to give us a lot of defense, and it's also going to give us more access to our combat ability. So, first of all, I will say, damage resistance gunners, very important. Gunners are still absolutely terrifying. Not quite as terrifying as pre-unlocked and loaded, but still prevalent enough to be a big danger to us. With this, we aren't actually getting the full 60% because of diminishing returns. We're getting around 45%-ish. There's no way to know the real true numbers of it, but it, it seems to be around 45%. All right, let's jump in and take a look at the talents. So, this is going to look a bit weird. We are taking Quietitude, Replenish 5% Toughness for each 10% Perils Quelled. We're then taking Warp Expenditure, Replenish 2.5% Toughness for every 10% Perils generated. We're going to be generating a lot of Perils. Into Metal, Critical Hits Replenish 5% Toughness, also grants 5% Movement Speed for 4 seconds, stacks 3 times. Into Perfect Timing, 3% Warp Damage for 10 seconds on Critical Hits, stacks 5 times. Into Toughness Boost, and then we're taking a Sail. Throw swift homing projectiles formed of psychic energy, less effective versus carapace armored enemies. And then we're taking ethereal shards, projectiles from a cell now pierce additional targets. We're not taking quick shards because we don't really need to. This is going to be more of a horde softener than a main sort of thing to go with. So we'll use this as we're closing the gap and then we'll switch to our other weapons, giving it time to regenerate normally. Then into toughness damage reduction. And then into Malefic Momentum. Plus 4% damage to warp attacks for 8 seconds after a non-warp based kill stacks 5 times. Plus 4% damage to non-warp attacks for 8 seconds on warp based kill stacks 5 times. So we will be juggling between a sail and our ranged melee weapon. So this is quite a fun interactive build. So we'll be jumping between one and the other. When one runs out, we move to the other. When that one's done, we go back to that one, and it's so on and so forth. Then into the toughness damage reduction, into lightning speed, plus 10% melee attack speed. Uh, a viewer did ask for a sort of 
melee psyker build and this is kind of the closest i can get to it to be honest it's not super melee but it's kind of the best i can do and then into uh by crack of bone melee weak spot kills quell five percent peril and reduced further peril generation by 20 percent for four seconds now we're going to be generating most of our peril through scryer's gaze and assail and the reasoning we're taking quietitude is we're not actually quelling any perils uh say like we would do with a staff but we're quelling it in other ways to give us that toughness so by crack of bone melee weak spot kills quell five percent perils this is giving us a way to quell and also reap the rewards from these types of abilities and then into warp splitting up to 100 percent cleave based on peril now i've gone for this one because it's a funny ability, but if you don't like it, you can dump the point out here and either put it back into a toughness boost down here or into crystalline will. Although I don't think we're going to be, we, I don't explode very much for this build. There's a lot of inbuilt stoppers to stop that from happening, or you can put it into a surgery of arms. But I just like the cleave, so I usually uh, stick it with warp splitting. And then down into prescience, your you and your allies in coherency gain plus five percent critical hit chance this is a very crit heavy build as always plus five percent range damage empathic evasion critical hits make you count as dodging against range attacks for one second uh, most of our attacks are going to be very crit heavy so this is going to help us basically dance between ranged attacks and then into scryer's gaze Triggers Scry's Gaze. When entering Scry's Gaze, you gain 10% damage plus 20% critical chance and suppression immunity. For every second in Scry's Gaze, you gain 1% damage up to a maximum of plus 30%. This effect lingers for 10 seconds after leaving Scry's Gaze. While in Scry's Gaze, you build up peril. Build up is temporarily slowed down by kills. At 100% peril, Scry's Gaze ends. Base cooldown 25 seconds. And then to augment that, we're going for Endurance. Scryer's Gaze now grants plus 20% toughness damage reduction while active. And also Precognition. Weak spot kills count as one second spent in Scryer's Gaze. For each second spent in Scryer's Gaze, you now also gain 1% finesse damage to a maximum of 30%, which lingers for 10 seconds after leaving Scryer's Gaze. So this is just basically pumping up our damage to ludicrous degrees. Uh, we're not taking the other ones because we don't really need them. There's not a big chance of us exploding in Scryer's Gaze as long as you don't, you know, just act silly and spam a sail when you're about to explode. I mean, you know, that's kind of on you if you do that. And then into Critical Chance Boost, as I said, very crit-heavy build. Into Health Boost, into Warp Rider. Deal up to 20% damage increased as your perils increase. As you can see, we're doing everything we can to get ourselves buffed at high and low peril because we will be bouncing up and down between them and then into kinetic deflection while below critical perils blocking an attack causes you to gain peril instead of losing stamina gained peril is 25 percent of the blocked attack stamina cost now here is another way you can augment this build if you really want to you could switch over to using the blaze force sword the demius version is my advice with Uncanny Strikes and Deflector on. This is going to make you very, very immune to ranged damage, but you will not have as much damage against those hard targets like the Crushers, Maulers, and those sorts of things. The Dueling Sword gives you way more chance of dealing with them quickly than the Blaze Force Sword does, but the Blade Force Sword does give you more range of movement really to be defensive and fight so it swings and roundabouts really i would highly suggest the dueling sword but if you want you can try out the blaze force sword it does work it just isn't as effective back to the talents so that's kinetic deflection and then into tranquility through slaughter non-warp ranged critical hits quell four percent peril again more ways for us to quell those, that peril and also give us toughness back through quelling. All of these talents are linked together. So basically every node has a corresponding one 
that does the opposite and buffs us. Then into movement speed boost, into true aim. Landing five weak spot hits grants your next range attack a guaranteed critical. You can only trigger once per attack. But with something as stupidly fast as the recon las gun, there's just lots of crits just happened. I mean, you're not going to be uh, hosing down crushes like you would do on the veteran, as you can see. But let's have a little reload. Use some of the assails up, and we're going to scry's gaze. Slightly more effective, but we did hit a hundred a bit too quick there. That's why when you're using Scry's Gaze, you want to go in at very low perils. Oh no, they've changed that. That's wrong. Sorry. When you go to Scry's Gaze, it usually flattens everything out. Right, sorry, I'm thinking of how it was before unlocked and loaded. As you see there, 23 perils, quite a lot of damage, and I basically messed it up. Anyway, that is me confusing myself greatly. I, I do far too many builds. I get confused between some of them sometimes. Please forgive me. Anyway, down into true aim. As I was saying, landing the five weak spot hits to gain that uh, guaranteed crit is very easy with the recon las gun because it does just spray things down. I don't know what I was trying to do there. I got confused about the crusher and just kind of my brain fell apart. Anyway. Back into the build. Toughness boost into Disrupt Destiny. Every second, enemies within 25 meters have a chance of being marked. Killing a marked enemy replenishes 10% toughness and grants 20% movement speed for 2.5 seconds and adds a precision bonus for 4 seconds. Each precision bonus grants 1% damage, 2% critical damage, and 2.5% weak spot damage. Precision bonus stacks 15 times, and when the duration ends, one stack is removed and the duration is refreshed, which means you don't lose them all at once, which is good. And with something like the Recon Las Gun, it doesn't work in the uh, training room, which is annoying, but their heads will glow blue. It's quite obvious which one you need to kill, and it does work if you are throwing a sail at them. As you can see, a sail mostly goes for headshots. It still does quite a lot of damage. And as you can see, we can quell with um, a sail as well if you really want to, though we shouldn't really have to. Most of our quelling should be done through using the gun, killing, and, you know, all that sort of thing, and weak spots, and so on and so on. And then to augment Disrupt Destiny, we're going for Lingering Influence. Increase the duration of Disrupt Destiny from 4 seconds to 10. And then Cruel Fortune, Weak Spot Kills grant 2 additional stacks of Disrupt Destiny. This build really does reward for volume of hits and accuracy of hits. So basically, the more hits you can do, the better. The more accurate you are, even better. More crit, stacking on more crit, on more finesse, on more finesse damage, so on and so forth. I really like this build. It's very stupid. And basically, you don't really play as a Psyker. But, unlike before Unlocked and Loaded, where this basically just turns you into a veteran, they have added a lot more nuance to the build by, say, like, this part of the tree and adding more stuff in to make it feel more rewarding playing as this. Whereas before, you would literally just have a revolver and a dueling sword and it's like, that's it. Just every now and again pop Scry's Gaze. This actually makes you feel like a combat psyker instead of just a crappy version of a veteran. I don't see very many people playing it this way as, I mean, I don't play the, the, the Psyker very much anymore. But uh, since the update of Unlocked and Loaded, they have made them a lot more fun to play with. And I really do hope you guys enjoy this build. And if you do, please do like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, it really does help us out. And if you have any requests for a build you'd like to see, please do let us know in the comments down below, and I will get to it as quickly as possible. So, until the next video, thank you very much for watching.
Take it easy and I'll see you later.